Yeah, I met him in like 1984. I mean, he he was again. He was really poor. He used to live under his pattern cutting table at one point when I first met him. You know, literally. But he'd come out of St Martin's. He was a bit younger than the original St Martin's crew that I'd met. I mean, I, I was friends with Vivian Westwood and Malcolm Farron, and I'd been sort of knowing them since the seventy seventy seven, and you know. So I was. I, I always liked the fashion thing. My girlfriend had been in a. Um, she said, "You've got to come meet this guy." So I went to St Martin's, uh, it's a degree show. She comes on and she's got clogs on and a tree in her hair and she's got these dead mackerel and they're throwing these dead mackerel at the crowd. So, and I'm like, this is a fashion, it was like a two minute fashion show, it was just like mad. That was his first show. It actually shocked me. Really exciting theatre and confrontery and it was just great. Yeah. And I remember just after sitting there and there's there's me and everyone would let you as they do in a fashion show you just leave it and i just when my mouth was open and i looked on the floor and there's this frozen mackerel <laughs> just looking at me i just thought this is mad yeah i went backstage and he said you know will you work with me i you know and i was like absolutely you know let's do something and and we worked together ever since probably about six years later we were sitting on in my studio and we, we were going through stuff and i found this record that i'd bought in peckham in like 90 75 or something and he had like a little sticker on it if I knew it was the original one I said oh look this is a record and he said I used to live in Peckham I was like what and I yeah and so we we were little kids we used to go and do the same thing so so um he he grew up around there as well so we we had that uh, sort of revelation that we were both doing the same things separately with our mums you know the record company people would go what are you doing that for and i'd be like i don't know but i really like it you know i didn't and then it ends up sort of making good money and and you know taking over your life uh, which i didn't expect it to i mean we ended up doing about 12 shows a year i think which if you think about it, it's one every four weeks. So, and, and the productions on them, I mean, we'd have orchestras and choirs and Kodo drummers and, and uh, you know, 20 piece string orchestras playing with the mixes and lots of stuff, which obviously we were thrilled to do. Record company people would come up and go, oh, that's good. And I'm like, yeah, well, you wouldn't fucking pay for it. <laughs> you, know? you know, you wouldn't do anything like that because they were all obsessed with what chart position they were going to be that week. And there was no long-term thinking about it. It was more in America, but here it was just singles, bang, bang, bang. You know, from 2000 onwards, it was pretty much Dior and Galliano full time. I remember when we did a big budget thing, when we, we did a 40 voice gospel choir, I took the bill in to the managing director of Dior and he goes, I'm not paying that. And I'm going, yeah, you are. <laughs> you know? And it was great. And then afterwards, he loved it. You know, he was like, this is, you know, he's very proud of what we'd done, but he didn't want to pay for it initially. But then he, you know, I, I don't blame him. He's not selling music. He was yeah. selling tights and perfume. But that's what's the joy of this sort of art thing is, is you can do great things that, the, the, the money actually can come from somewhere else. It doesn't have to be from the product, yeah. you know. And we were doing these uh, amazing shows and only for the 2,000 people, 1,000 people that got to see them. And then they'd go, yeah. you know, and they'd disappeared. Yeah. But luckily, we've got them all on DVD, so you can see them at your leisure now. <laughs> but but be before then, they would just, we'd do it and they'd disappear, yeah. you know, and it'd be on to the next one. Because the, the schedule was like relentless, you know. I mean, it's like you do this amazing show, you go, God. And when we first started, we were doing like two shows a year and we put so much into it and we'd be like, oh God, I'm going to need six months off now, you know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you get used to it, but it's incredibly, uh, you know, it, it got more and more and more busy, you know.